And when we're doing our warm ups, think if there are um, any areas of your study that you'd like to ask questions about before we start the big class. Changing directions. Very good. Widening the stance a little, keeping the weight nice and even between the toes and the heel. Belly drawing to the spine, pivoting the hips forward and up. If you want more of a challenge, bring the hands to the center of the chest. More challenge still, hands behind the ears. Two more. The last one. Good narrowing that stance a little bit. Belly still drawing to the back. Thinking down and then raising up. Give you the back straight, back straight down, back straight as you lift, and then arc back. Good. Widening the stance a bit. Bring the back to parallel with the ground. Turn and look. Taking your time. Keep going. Once again, the weight is distributed evenly between the front and the back of the foot. Good, slowly rolling side to side. Excellent. A few more. And now 10 more of the swoop. Good. Drawing back up. Feet a bit wider than shoulder width. So that's just great big circles. And then from that circle, adding in the swoop.
two more. Last one, change sides. Nice complete circles, making sure not to lock out your knee as you roll through. Two more. The last one. All right, shaking the legs out for a moment. Stepping to the side, raising the foot, step, raise. Two more. Good. Sinking that stance a little bit. Belly drawing to the spine. Pulling the foot out of the ground without letting your weight shift too far over. And back. You're trying to kick yourself in the butt. Last one. Good. Slightly wider stance, turning to the side, drawing the belly to the spine, concaving the chest slightly. As the arms pull back, feel a pull forward of your hip. And then in one smooth movement, we're going to draw the arms back in. So we dislodge that heel and back. Make sure everything's still round. And again, good. Three, four. Five, adjust, one, two, three, four, five, good, change sides. So we, if, if we were to imagine a small child there, would you essentially be um, like flinging their shoulders backward as you like kick their knees out forward? That is exactly what you do to Very nice. Shake that out. Okay, going into some of our lower stance work, starting out with our outside crescent to sink. So we're gonna start with a very low kick, right? The foot comes around and behind. As we build to that, we're gonna work that weight transfer we were doing last class. So start from feet to even, just like this. There's our toe grab, belly draw, chest concave, head neck lift. The weight pours up and over as it pushes in the rooting leg. It frees the other leg to lift from the belly and step around behind. Let's give that a try. So again, from feet to even, the foot crosses in front, pulls to the outside, steps behind, then maintain that feeling of pressure down as we sink. Same pressure as we lift. And as the weight shifts now to that back foot, feel that weight transfer through the belly as the foot raises, steps behind, maintain that pressure down for two, keep the pressure up as we rise up, shift that weight, pushing into that rooting leg as the foot comes around for three. As you get more comfortable, you can increase the speed and height of the kick, but make sure that weight transfer is always paramount. Rising up and across. Up and six. Up, seven. Up, eight. Two more. Nine. Keep the pressure as you sink. Keep the pressure as you lift for our last one. 
10. Good. Shake the legs out for a second. Hands on the knees. Let's do five circles each side. Change sides. Good. Knees to neutral, forward, open, and back. That's right chain. Back to neutral, back, open, and forward. Good. Now we're going to do the step, step, synced twist. So step one, step two, figure four, turn pull. Let's try it together. Step across, step up, figure four. Like there's a string pulling your kneecap back to step. Two more nice and high. One, two, figure four, turn, draw. One, two, figure four, turn, draw. Now it's that level shift. And Sandy as before, step, step. As I sink, I'm pushing the ground. As I raise up, I'm pushing the ground into a turn. Back. And I kick the home board. And one, two, and turn. For three. See, I'm pulling the shoulder back. That shoulder pull draws me around. Pulling the shoulder back, four. Very nice, Chris. Five. Twisting as you raise up, so you're raising kind of on angle. Six, as you draw back. Seven. Eight. Two more. Nine. Last one. Ten. Very good. Five circles right and left with the knees. One, two, three, four, five. Other direction. Okay. Slightly wider stance. Twisting to the ground. So again, the belly drawn in, chest concave. Slowly pivot, pushing into the ground as you sink. And I stretch out, I'm opening up the piriformis of my front leg just a little. As I raise up, nice and slow to neutral front, turning the other way, pushing into the ground, now opening up the other piriformis just a little as I twist. And up, taking your time. Slow descent, slow ascent. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Two more. Push into the ground for nine. Last one. And ten. Good. To some hip circles. <clears throat> There's the timer. All right. External rotation. Nice big circles. Going to hit the knee loose after all that low work. Gripping the ground lightly with the foot. Trying the belly just a little towards the spine. Softening the chest. You knit the clavicles and raising that head neck.
Very nice, change directions. And she's off. You missed your opportunity, you could have gotten her. I know. And old and slow, Karen. Old and slow. Well, I'm cheering you on. Right? <laughs> Good. Into figure eights. It was funny with all the Beijing work I am at 37 stronger and more flexible than I was at any point in my 20s. I hear you. Better at age 40 than I was at age 20. Nice. <laughs> Looking forward to the 40s. They're going to be fun. <laughs> There's some maturing that, that can happen. And that's a nice thing. <laughs> I'm sure there is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jane. And back to the middle. And that right leg internal rotation. Moving from the hip. My guy. Yeah. You're gonna brace off my legs. A poor time to do that. <laughs> Janie, come here. Good, changing legs. Good job, Fritzy. Gentle grabbing with the toes, drawing the belly to the spine, knit the clavicles to concave the chest, and raising from the head and neck. Now you want down? Okay. There you go. And from here, working into our figure eights. No, different figure eight. It's the same. Good enough. Yeah. It works. Is that Samba? Yeah. <laughs> And if everyone wanted Samba hips, this is a good first step. Good. Again, toe grab, belly draw, concave the chest, knitting the clavicles, and raising that head and neck just a little bit. Complete circles around and in, out, around and in. Good. And relaxing back to neutral for just a second. From here, arms arc one way, hips arc the other. A side view. My hands and belly cross, and there's space. Things come up and cross, and there's space. Two more going this way. Changing directions. For the great big circle, just get loose and comfortable with the motion. Good. Okay, focusing just on the hips for a second. Back to our figure eights. Relax in that figure eight. Then initiate from my right hip as I round and then drill into the back leg and then back to neutral for figure eights. Again, starting from that right hip, it's gonna go for a larger arc. As it draws back to 50-50, I'm gonna switch over to my left leg, which drills into the ground. So watch me once, I do with the arms, right? I have that circle, round, break that orbit, press, okay? So again, just with the legs, right hip one more time, big circle, 
drill into that back leg. And notice that I drill, my hips are filling. I'm not abandoning that front leg. There's still about 30% pressure into that front leg as I coil into the ground on my back leg. That's right, Jane. Head butt right to the balls. Very good boy. <laughs> He's just the right height all of a sudden. And Mini murder machine. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. You saying hi? That's a good high. Can you give mama for a second? Thank you. You're dragging. So, figure eights again. This time from the other hip. Great big circle. Drilling into that back leg. And back to neutral. Figure eights. Great big circle. Drilling. Last time on the side. Figure eights. Great big circle, drill. And notice how my back is drawing right into my hips, how my glutes aren't tucked under, but there's that kind of relaxed S curve, so I can integrate my quadratus lumborum into my glutes, into the back of my hamstrings. And so I'm feeling this great big, almost like bowing of musculature traveling all the way through from my base into my back as I go into that posture. Does that make sense? Cool. Oh, sorry, I need to clean the waffle chunks off the floor real fast. We got a drive by waffling. All right. So now the arms and the legs. We have our circles. And notice how I'm going to a figure eight here and not just big circle arc, right? So rounding. Figure eight, figure eight, and now this next one, pulling, draw that hip around, drill to press. Changing sides, external rotation. Would you mind just doing one side a bunch of times in a row? Totally, totally. So we go this side a bunch, okay? Okay. So what does that mean? The arms are going to go that way or the rounding is going to go that way? That I'm going to press out this way and drill back the other way over and over again. So okay. Here each time. Okay. Okay. We're just going to do a couple of this posture, then we're going to simplify it a little bit. I just want to show kind of everything is stacking in here. They're going to break down a little bit further. So again, from that figure eight, roll, roll, roll. So you're doing a figure eight with your head? I, I'm, I'm still, I'm sorry, I'm still totally having trouble perceiving how that thing is coming together. <laughs> But so let me show real quick what's happening. Then we're going to step back a level so everyone can get into it more easily, okay? So what I'm showing here, and I apologize, it's hard to show the, this you know, transition from the big circle to figure eight um, super well over the screen. So with the big circle, go side view, there's a round to press, round to press, right? So it's one big arc, then we break that arc to press out. We get I'm just having trouble perceiving a figure eight there. It looks like the, to me, the hip movement looks, looks round. And I, I get that there's a figure eight that I'm not seeing. <laughs> right, so the round is kind of the first step to getting opposite body movement between the hands and the hips. And so the round gets you to that right patterning. And then from there, hip, hip, left, right round. The left hip pulls the arms up the right hip pulls the arms around. And so you see how there's still basically a circle, but I'm drawing into that figure eight in the middle now. And then from here, eventually we're gonna work into carrying that into our press. And so there are several more circles, each of them have a smaller amplitude and are all building towards the press as opposed to one big circle to press. Does that make sense? Not at all, sorry. <laughs> No worries. So, creating. <laughs> so I'm this is partly the purpose of video because I feel like I just, there's a three dimensionality to it that I'm just having trouble perceiving. Totally, totally. And again, I'm really happy to break it down. I'm just going to spend a couple moments on this and then we'll move on. I'll try to find other ways of talking about for next class. Okay. Yeah, I realize that I might be the only person that needs this breakdown. So. This is some weird shit. And what's happening is that every time there's a joint in the body, right, a joint complex, you can add a kind of a circle pivoting off the tangent of another circle mm -hmm. is the premise for this. And so I can have my whole body is one big circle, 
and I can roll around that one big circle and then break off that one big tangent for a press. Or I can have multiple smaller circles and then round all those together, cascading them into a press. Mm -hmm. And so both the one big circle and the multiple circles end up in the same basic formation. It's just the big circle requires a greater amplitude movement to get there and more force, whereas the smaller circles require more coordination, but less force and less overt movement to create the shape. That's the delineation. Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that part makes sense. I just, I'm just having trouble perceiving all of the, like all of the different motions as they coordinate together. Totally, like, totally. Understand it, I'll be able to do it. <laughs> right, and so the major component pieces here are the upper body movement of the big circle, right? And the lower body movement of the figure eights. And so the first major challenge is stacking this on top of this. Okay, and you're doing an external figure eight. External rotation, correct. And so when we have that figure eight, see the hip comes through, it draws the arms out. Hands draw to the hip, hands push off the hip. Okay, I think the truth is that it just takes all of my available brain cells to keep the figure eight going in the right direction while doing the arms. So I don't think I can possibly like coordinate to the final movement yet. And I think that's a great place for us all to work today. Does anyone feel bored by that? Nope. Cool. <laughs> I think it's really good. I mean, like honestly, like the tendency that when I was first starting doing that shepherd's boy high glee motion is to like slack on the opposing hip but this breaks it down in a manner where like the energy isn't being lost and there isn't fumbling with the structure. Right. And the basic idea here again is that you can always add in another circle, a really brief tangent you know, um, story. When I was um, in Beijing years back, um, my Sherpa was talking about we have the fixed eight palm set of Bagua, right? Which is like the very basic palms that you walk and hold and transition side to side. And he was saying that, you know, as you practice, you can go from your one circle with a central post to no post and then multiple circles on the tangent of that first circle. I said you can have eight circles on tangent to that circle and then eight circles on those circles, eight circles on those circles, exponentially increase it, right? And the same basic idea is true for body coordination, right? You can start with one big circle and then from there find all the little places that you can build circles up that can support you, carrying you to the same space without forcing you to move in such an overt way. And so as the coordination of coiling becomes more and more comfortable, you can add more and more layers to it and make it an ever more complex and less overt process. And so you see a beginner practice going through, the coils are really obvious in the press. You see a master, which I am not, and you can barely see the coil coming through, even though it's every bit of the draw and more from the person making that one big arc to press. There's a power in the cascade of events, in the this to that to that, that accelerates towards a goal that you just can't have from one big arc, right? Now, one big arc of full body movement is preferable to no arc and just pushing out with the big muscle groups. This is absolutely an important place to start. And then from there, we start adding in all these other little areas that can kind of build in and like Lego pieces stack on and create new and more fun shapes out of them. Does that make sense? So the idea of that would be that like with these big obvious movements, we're smoothing out obvious breaks in our motion and yeah. As we get more and more fine-tuned, we can smooth out tinier and tinier breaks. And then to really be masterful, you're coordinating this delicate little coil with no breaks, ideally, all the way through your whole structure. And then you can have a, like a powerful folly that's very small physically. Exactly. So all that force in a very tiny package. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And that just takes time and practice. So again, for today, it's enough that all of you see that this is an important step but that we can begin to add in new and creative elements to it as we play. Okay, so in your daily practice, what I recommend if you really want to start you know, stacking these circles on top of each other is begin with the internal external rotation of the hips, make sure each hip feels good, right? From there, figure eights. From there, play with our great big circles a couple times each side, get comfy there. If you know that into the press, you can add that into the press. If you don't add the press, that's okay. And then start playing with how the coiling, either internal or external, can begin to draw the arms in, right, for internal, 
we have our slicing. For external, we have our rolling and our lifting and drawing. There are all kinds of fun little games you can start to kind of add in. And that will just build your vocabulary with this stuff. Sound good? Yeah, I feel like the, the, just the circle to press, I still don't understand necessarily like which direction to go on that. So I think that that's like, that's the building block that I need to get clear before I can. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add in, instead of the coordinated press, we're gonna do the throwing of the ball. Okay, yeah, that one's a little easier, right? It's much easier, but has the exact same base and mechanics as the press. So it's a really nice kind of half step to get you towards that. Cool, thank you. Of course, so let's start with that together, everyone. And we're gonna begin with big overt circles. And we're going to do three, and I'm going to count it off very slowly as we go to the left. Okay, so there's one, two, and now on three, as we come around, the hip rolls. I carry the ball, and as I drill into that back leg, I'm reaching up and over. So you see how there's a stretch up from about the, um, the base of it, those first two costal muscles going up and over, that's arcing up. And then from right beneath the ribs, from the obliques on down, I'm pressing down and in that middle right here where Yao, right, meets the Chinese back, there's a stretch up and a stretch down. So again, here down, reaching down, here up, reaching up and over, it's the same side again from the circle. One, two, and again on three, I roll the hip, hips come to neutral, drill that back leg, throw the ball. Twice more nice and slow, then I'll break down some more of the mechanics that are going on here. One, Two, still focusing on the leg as we come through for three, that left leg rounds back to neutral, right leg drills, and through for line holds ball. One more time, roll. I'm not sure that I'm moving my arms in the right direction for, like, I feel like with this exercise, I, I can never predict which direction the arms are gonna go. Like, it's like it doesn't make sense in my brain. <laughs> Break down the arms after this next one. So we get a lot of time to work with that one. Hopefully it makes some sense of it. <laughs> Let me know. Because again, I really want to get better explaining this one over the computer. It's a tricky one. Yeah. One, two, and for three, the hip comes forward, left hip rolls, right hip drills, and the reach. So the legs look pretty good for all of you. Let's talk about the arms briefly, okay? Or in depth, we'll see how we need. So from the circle, as I round the hip, you see how I'm holding essentially I'm holding my cauldron, right? I roll the hip, my hips come to neutral. I'm holding that sphere right in front of my body. As I lift over and begin to drill out the leg, as I press down, everything from here presses down, everything from here lifts up, and that split is what carries me up and over for my throw. Again, nice and slow on three, one, two, and focusing on the arms this time. As the arms come around, they hold that cauldron, hips and shoulders to even, drilling into that back leg as, as I drill down, there's a lift and a reach. And I'm feeling a stretch right through here on the back of those costal muscles as I reach over and draw to the side. The isometrics of like the arms create like a deeper pull into the hip. Right. Exactly. And so again, as I sink down, I push down to raise up in much the same way that if I want to take an appropriate gong fu step, I don't just bend at the knee. I push to raise that foot up. I want to raise the arms up. I could do that, but you can see this is empty. As I drill into that back, I try it nice and slow, but I'm holding here, drill, turn, lift back, drill, turn, lift back and by drilling I mean the pressure going into that foot isn't a sink it's a wrap you see how i'm internally rotating that hip as i press down as i coil for that press i raise the arm up uncoil to neutral coil press turn uncoil to neutral 
Playing with that, press to lift, press to down. Press as we sink, arm goes up. Press as we raise, arm comes down. Two more together. And this last one, put your other hand on your side body if you can, and feel the lat engage as the foot presses, and feel how the muscle kind of morphs as we stretch into that back leg. I can feel an engagement all the way down to about the level of T12 as I reach up and over and press. And again, T12, the 12 thoracic vertebra is that magical place where both the psoas and the diaphragm meets. And it's kind of the anhelical joining point of the upper and lower in a lot of ways for bone throw. So again, from that coil to through, good. Splitting at T12 and back. Any questions on this before I add some more pieces to it? Is that making some more sense? I yeah. mean, not much. There's like the illusion of like a static posture, but it has that wrap in the way that Sun T like has the supporting muscles that support like really coil in. Right. And what makes the diaphragm the psoas so pivotal for this is they're the two muscles that traverse front to back in the body, right? Because if we want to get a solid base that we can stretch out of, it's nice to have that forward back hold along with the side wrapping, you know, of the lats and the costal muscles and the obliques. And so it's kind of a combination of those deeper postural muscles and the coiling of the more you know, surface musculature that creates the power of that shape. So let's try the shape, let's try that roll once more to so the hips, coil to press, and then from there into our circles. One, two, and we're gonna go through the whole motion, right? So we go really slow, the arms round as that left hip comes through. The hip pulls as the arms come to center. My body comes to the middle. As I coil into that back right leg, I lift up through the thoracic and reach to the side as I press down. And then pushing into the ground, I draw the arms back in and regain my circle for three. One. Two, and again, really slow on three as the arms wrap, the left hip comes forward. As I pull that hip around, the arms round as the hip rounds. I draw the middle, everything's held in that basin. I coil and press into that back leg, stretching up at the thoracic as I turn to reach. And one more to the side. One. Two, and on three, reach as I pull the hip forward, rounding the hip as I round the shoulders. Changing legs, I drill on that back leg, that drill down creates the press. I push the leg as I draw myself back up and then back into my circle. And now watch me for a second. If I add some pop to this, right, I round, and you see how it's the, the hip drops as the shoulder raises, right? There's that same splitting of this sinks down so everything else can draw up. That's the split of the thigh lead right there in the middle where the force drops down, pushing into the ground, reflects back up into the arms. Okay, let's try the other side nice and slow. One, two, and on three, rounding that front right hip as we round the shoulders. The hips come to neutral, the feet are now 50-50 as I switch that back leg. As I drill into that back leg, raising up and over, holding ball. A little press to get my body back up, and then right back around. Again, I never want to lift from a dead spot. I want to make sure that I'm pushing and pulling evenly to fill space. One, two, and on three, we pull that hip forward, the hip and shoulders round, drilling into the back leg as we raise up and over. Good, little press to get us out of the ground. And see from here, I change directions so I don't have to switch sides. One, two, Three, pulling that hip through, rounding the hip and shoulders as I draw to neutral, drilling into that back leg as I press up and over, pulling myself up and out, and then rounding. Last time to the side, 
Let's see how everyone's doing. One, two. Roll that front hip, round the shoulders, drill and toss. Good. Everyone give that a try on your own a couple times. If you have questions, let me know. Good, Eric. As you reach, Eric, use that hip roll to pull the shoulders up and the press to create the shape. Hip roll, press. Hip roll, press. Very nice, Eric. Very nice. Good, Chris. Feel the weight of your arms a little more, Chris. Less stabby and more roll. Feel that weight. Round, drop. Round, thunk. There you go. You never want to initiate from the arms. You want to initiate from that core. So if your arms can be more noodle-like in the beginning, so you can kind of play with that round and not worry about them so much. It's like you have two dead arms and you're very comically trying to flop them on a table. But from your middle. There you go. Very nice, Chris. Good, Craig. Craig, a little more up and over for right now and a little less poke. There's definitely some awesome folly you can do with that. But for right now, we want to play with that lift from the middle and that drop, finding how to carry weight from that rolling of the Dante end. Okay, Karen. Oh, I, I've already forgotten which, which direction of the arms coordinate with the, I, I just <laughs> lost it, so just skip me. <laughs> Don't worry about it, you're doing great, you're doing great. This is really tricksy stuff, all of you. You're doing wonderfully with it. Let's try a couple more together. Slow circles, one, two, roll, as I roll this way, I drill the other way, and that drill lifts me up and over. And one of the really important things here is that there's a straight, sorry, there's a consistent curve, rather, coming down through my body into the leg. I'm not breaking at the hip. The belly's engaged in, so that as I push down, I can feel my paraspinal muscles lifting as I reach through, okay? Let's try a couple more of these each side, rolling. And going to the right now, as I pull that right hip through, round, drill, stretch up as I push down. Very nice, very nice. No break into that back leg. Other side, roll. One, two, round that hip stretching as I press down. Again, no collapse, reaching out of that leg as I draw over. Good, two more together, roll. And round, pull the hip through. Drill into that left leg as the arms come over, reaching to the right. Last one together, roll. And round that front hip. Drill on that back right leg as the arms reach left. Good, and hold for a second. So, so Joey, yes. uh, as, we, uh, as we come forward here, 
is there's a slight sense of withdrawing on the lower arm, isn't there? There is, yes. Yeah. The ball would be, would be overturning if we went farther, right? Right, and the ball could just roll. If you want to do internal rotation with it, it could just be that. Uh -huh. Or if we're doing more of the, you know, um, Schwai job warm up. Right. There's the ball, right? Right. And so these spheres can be anywhere and we can stack them any way we want, right? Bagua as the teacup kind of work we do for the exact same purpose. It can be little circles in every joint that we're coordinating together. Mm -hmm. And again, for all of you, don't feel bad if there are parts of this you can't do yet. There are parts of this that I can't do yet. It's a constant process, right? If you can do this, which all of you can do, you're well equipped to break down every other step to it. It's just gonna take time and practice. And like Karen did today, if you're, if you're not getting it, ask questions. I'll break it down a half dozen other ways. You might still not get it, but at least I'll explain it a half dozen new ways you can start to build the connections and make sense of it, okay? I think maybe what I need to do is find one of your YouTube videos on this and play it at half speed. Because there's all there's a hundred little details that you're doing, like your knees are going the opposite direction before they go the final direction, and that's part of why I kept being confused about which direction we were going to end up going with the arms. <laughs> with the slicing too, right? It's not the hips are a little bit ahead, right? The hips pull the arms, the mm -hmm. hips pull the marionette string, and so it looks like the arms and legs. You know, you can see how they're moving together, but they're not 100% in line because that delay is that acceleration, right? Mm -hmm. Fabi, by is definition, isn't one point moving quickly, it's the acceleration of structures towards an end. And, yeah. and, and, that's, and that's why I can't follow along with you at full speed. <laughs> right. And I can't do it at my teacher's full speed. Like there are pieces that they have that I don't have yet, you know? And that's what's so cool about this, is that you can always kind of start that base and build up your own understanding. And as you play with this, um, I will shoot a video of this in slow speed and I'll post that next week. Oh, that's so sweet of you. <laughs> okay, this is, I'm showing a new series on complicated stuff, hopefully made simple. Um, so I'm doing the, the foot lift is the one I recorded yesterday. I'll do this as the subsequent video. So if any of you have things that have been challenging, uh, just text or, you know, email me and I'll make like 10, 15 minute videos on it. That's cool. And like, and YouTube has an option of playing things at half speed or like they have multiple speed choices. So yeah. like, if you record it slow and then there's the option to slow it down even more in the playback, then, totally. then that makes even more options <laughs> for learning. I'm recording them all from multiple angles. So it's easy to see exactly what's happening. Um, cool. so I'm gonna try to you know, add a new kind of you know, body of information to help make sense of this more challenging stuff because this stuff's tricksy. This stuff's really tricksy. And you're yeah, right. one thing, just one thing in terms of your wording on things, like when you say now we're gonna go to the left or now we're gonna go to the right, I have no idea what that means usually on okay. these. <laughs> Um, so I will get back to having post-its, or yeah, I don't think we we'll tape here, but I'll show having a it's, side and a non-side. It's, it's, it's not about struggling with right and left. It's about that I don't know what you mean by now we're going to go to the right. Does that mean the arms are going to go to the right? And what's the, like, which hip are we going to? And all, right. like... What I think mean is that the expression will be to the left, or the expression will be to the right. Okay. And so cool. it will be terminating left word or rightward. Yeah. But the other thing is that because we're on video, I'm usually mirroring you. So yeah. like, I'm, I'm already having to translate the opposite of right and left. <laughs> um, so it matters more to me, like whether I'm starting the movement on one side and I'm finishing to the opposite direction or like that's the way that my brain translates right and left anyway. So just, just for you to know. <laughs> it's great, it's great. So yes, Chris. Oh, I was going to say I found better results with ignoring the audio on that point and just mirroring the video. If oh. you follow Joey, like it's a lot easier. So that way you're not doing the mental labor of thinking about it. Yeah, that's actually why the audio book was so helpful because you actually weren't explaining anything. It was just like sink or swim, follow as best you can. And uh, like you were doing full like follies on that stuff that I found easy to follow actually when I wasn't using my brain. <laughs> so let's do again just a couple of most of this without me talking and then we'll Sorry. add. Sound good? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks for your patience. <laughs> you know, so I, this is all really helpful because I, again, I'm learning this medium too. So any information makes a big difference. So I'm just gonna, you know, we're still beginning and roll to drill. 
switching sides, roll to drill. Good. And now for overhead, round one, two, roll to lift. Other side, one, two, roll to lift. Other side, one, two, roll to lift. Making sure there's that nice curve without collapsing at the hip. Good, two more. One, two, roll to lift. Last one. One, two, roll to lift. Shake that out for a moment. Get a crisp of water, we'll add it going to the next. All right. Let's do some work with Shingy. Haven't done that for a long time. We have about five minutes left. So Shingy is a really old martial art, um, about a thousand years old in its earliest form. It's been evolving on a continuum. There are several different ways of practicing it. There are the 12 animals, the five elements. Today we're gonna to take a really brief look at two of the animals, um, tiger and dragon, okay? We're gonna start with um, tiger, because tiger is a very similar mechanic to the roll to lift we were just doing for Tiger, there's a clear step strike. Done sideways, clear, pulling the foot up, step strike. So start with just the footwork. One, two, three, four. Again, Open to the side, pull that foot in, three, four. Good. Open, pull, step in, two more of those. Open, pull, step in, very nice. Lastly, open, pull, step in. And so it's happening with that footwork, so I'll start facing towards the camera. As I step to the side, the tiger's parting the grass so you can see the target. The arms are circling as it does so. The same kind of arc we've been playing with before. Parting the grass, draws that foot up, and then the tiger pounces. Okay. So again, clear the grass, pull up the foot, step through. Good. And we're going to work on the coordinated movement today, not the folly of the pounce. Okay, we'll add that in the next class. So going one side, clear and step, pull the foot up, and strike. Other foot, clear, pull the foot up, step pounce. Good. Clear, pull the foot up, step pounce. Clear, pull the foot up, step pounce. Two more. One. Two. I'm watching me for a second. So what's nifty about Tiger is it has all of that coil that we're doing for the over lion holds ball, for our Tai Chi ward off. Well, it has this really nifty step that helps us to very you know, clearly time out the movement, right? As we step out, there's that press. As we pull that foot in, the hands are pulling the foot in. As we jump out to the side, the back is going back, the arms are going front, and there's our strike. And so everything is timed out very clean. Okay, so let's try that together. As we step to the side, press. Pulling that back foot in. And now from that coiled bundle, launching forward, step, strike. Very good. Is that making some sense, the, co the, co the coiling of that? Again, super useful mechanic for building this all up. And then do once on the other side. Step, clear the glass. One, pull that foot up. Two, stepping through to strike. 
three. Good. And the tiger strike, if you want to practice that on your own between now and next class, a great way to work on that is that Zhang Shuyan shoulder drop, because in the end, tiger is that coil to the roll through, just combining those two mechanics together. Okay? And lastly, real quick, let's look at dragon. Dragon is my personal favorites. For dragon, there's a coil, lift, hands turn. Draw down, coil, lift, and sink. Let's try it nice and slow together. That go forward, round, and as we round, we're going to draw that front leg up. And as the arms raise, the knee raises, as the fists raise up, the foot comes forward, and let's go to that again. The side view. We have our rounding. And now as the arms round, they're gonna pull that hip up. As the knee raises, the arms raise. As the leg extends, the fists raise up. Now let's carry that through. Rounding, one, two, and on three, pulling the foot up, raise, step that foot out, the hands turn and cascade front hand, then back hand, drawing your partner down to the ground. It can be a nice high stance. If you're comfy with this, you can carry it all the way to the ground. From here, that front foot takes a small little step, rounding, Pulling that back hip up, raising the back leg up as we kick the foot out with the strike, stepping, front hand draws, back hand comes over as the hips turn to sink. Raising up, front foot takes a little step, round. Pulling that back hip up, drawing the back leg up, kicking out with the foot as the hands raise, step, hands turn, turning the body to the side, one hand, two hand to sink, do two more of these, raising up, foot steps, drawing that back hip up, Pressing out, step, roll. Good, and relax for a second. So that's the basic of dragon. As you get more comfortable with it, the kick has a stronger draw down as you step up. It can turn this nice little hop that pulls you across the floor. But again, what I really love about these two movements is that it makes that coordination of the hand and the foot just intrinsic to the shape, right? You can't go from phase to phase without that coil and pull. And so it's kind of a nice little back step to take as we build in the more complex movements in the latter martial arts like Bhagavan Taiji. I feel like there's a, I, maybe I've seen it, it's in my subconscious somewhere. I didn't get that far in Xing Yi, but definitely I have a feeling that must be somewhere in 64. Oh, dude, all of Zhang Shuan's uh, 64 just reeks of Xingyi. 